I beg to move the following motion standing in my name, whereas is provided by Section 63.1 of the Public Finance Management Act, Cap 15.01, the Act, that the Minister of Finance may, by an affirmative resolution of Parliament, borrow from a bank or other financial institution for the capital accrued expenditure of government. And whereas it is further provided by Section 64 of the Act, that money borrowed by the government must be paid into and form part of the consolidated fund. And whereas the Minister of Finance considers it necessary to borrow an amount of US dollars, 5,217,000 from the special funds resources of the Caribbean Development Bank, the bank, to finance safety nets for vulnerable populations affected by COVID-19. And whereas the loan is repayable in 80 equal or approximately equal and consecutive quarterly installments, and whereas the loan payments commence on the first day of January, the first day of April, the first day of July, and the first day of October of each year, after a grace period of three years following the date of the loan, or such later date as the bank specifies in writing, and whereas the interest is payable at the rate of 4.39% per annum on the amount of the principal disbursed and outstanding, and the borrower may request an in interest rate conversion from the bank, be it resolved that the Parliament authorizes the Minister of Finance to borrow 5,217,000 from the special funds resources of the bank to finance, safe, to finance safety nets for the vulnerable populations affected by COVID-19. The loan is bid for the result that the loan is repayable in 80 equal, approximately equal and quarterly installments. Loan repayments commence on the first day of January, the first day of April, and the first day of July, and the first day of October of each year after a grace period of three years following the date of the loan or such later date as the bank specifies in writing. Interest is payable at the rate of 4.39% per annum on the amount of the principal is burst and outstanding, and the borrower, the, borrower, the borrower may request an interest rate conversion from the bank. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, this resolution is seeking approval from the Parliament to borrow the sum of $5,217,000 US dollars from the special resources of the, of the Caribbean Development Bank allocated from IDB COVID-19 relief resources for the implementation of safety nets for the vulnerable populations affected by the COVID virus. Mr. Speaker, I did not rehash the effects of COVID on the economy of St. Lucia and the economy and economies of the world. You may recall that St. Lucia's economy declined by, over 20, by about 26% after the effects of COVID, Mr. Speaker. Several measures were put into place for the management of COVID, Mr. Speaker, and including vaccines, story and vaccines, Mr. Speaker, including the quarantine for people who were, who were suspected of having or being exposed to COVID and the isolation of people who had COVID, Mr. Speaker. And also the payment of income support, mainly from the NIC for, for people who lost their jobs, who lost their livelihoods because of COVID, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is, it is calculated that over 33,000 persons in the hotel and tourism sectors when <coughs> <clears throat> were negatively impacted by COVID, and 70% of households reported income, de income declines, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the biggest job losses occurred in the wholesale, retail, and restaurant sector, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is no, no, it's no secret that COVID really affected the region and St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, managing the COVID pandemic was difficult, but managing the after the effects, after the effects of COVID, Mr. Speaker, is 
was made more difficult by the Ukraine, by the war in Ukraine, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I've, al I've always said, which is a matter that can't be disputed, that one of our most consistent revenue earners, which is the fuel tax, the tax from fuel, Mr. Speaker, we, it was budgeted that we'd have collected $65 million this year from fuel taxes based on, on the normal price of fuel or the projected price of fuel before the war in Ukraine. And to date, Mr. Speaker, we have not collected $20 million from fuel taxes to date. And we've, we continue to subsidize cooking gas between $18 and $20, $20 every tank of cooking gas that's purchased by the St. Lucian public. We, the government subsidizes it between $18 and $20, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, you, you understand that the impact of COVID has really affected us and affected the economy of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. And this is why the government sought to seek some support or some or loan from the Caribbean Development Bank Special Resources, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the purpose of the loan was to do the following things, and my colleague, the Minister of Equity, is a very happy man this morning, and I'm sure he may need more than an hour to explain the effects. But let me warn him, Mr. Speaker, he will not be given any extra time. <laughs> he's a very happy man this morning because his dream, Mr. Speaker, is coming through. Mr. Speaker, the project will provide income support and grants to over 8,496 poor and vulnerable solutions, Mr. Speaker. In order to provide that income support and grants <coughs> to these <coughs> to these 8,000 odd people, Mr. Speaker, the project would comprise the following. One, protection using existing cash transfer programs. Two, protection for the vulnerable populations not on present transfer programs working in the informal sector and support for learning continuity in vulnerable groups and project management, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Minister will give, will detail these, these aspects, these four aspects, um, he, he, he will detail them, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I want to say to you that the project is a one-year project and we are going to ensure that there is equity, Mr. Speaker, in the disbursement of these funds. All constituencies and all people, regardless of where they live, Mr. Speaker, of regardless of who represents them, will be able to seek to get benefits from this loan, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the, it's very important, Mr. Speaker, that I make that, that distinction because, Mr. Speaker, in previous times, people from constituencies represented by the opposition were kept away from these facilities or from these initiatives by the government, Mr. Speaker. I recall in my constituency, there was a call to increase the number of vulnerable people in my constituency. And, and I'm not blaming the officials of the ministry because they were under orders, Mr. Speaker, not to contact the parliamentary representative, not to contact him, on the line they would not. And these, the people who were defeated, who continue to get defeated, and who will get defeated in the future, were given the, were given the privilege to put names on these, to put names to get support, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, during, the, the, during COVID, when food was being distributed in the constituency, Mr. Speaker, the parliamentary rep of the six constituencies that were in opposition, not one of them were called to give a, a morsel of food to their constituents, Mr. Speaker. Not one of them. And that is a fact, Mr. Speaker. That's a fact. But this program, that will not happen, Mr. Speaker. You know what happened? 
the plan was to disenfranchise and to weaponize these projects so that they would have got political gain by that Mr. Speaker. But the people of St. Lucia saw differently. The people of St. Lucia knew differently, Mr. Speaker. And that is why the people of St. Lucia elected us. Not to do the same, but to do it, but to ensure that there is equity, Mr. Speaker. And that is why, that is why, Mr. Speaker, under the, the constituency development program, the members of the opposition who never, never found it necessary to involve any member of, the, of our side were in opposition, Mr. Speaker. They are given an allocation like members of the government. And that will continue, Mr. Speaker. That will continue. So when you speak about victimization, when you speak about marginalization, Mr. Speaker, it's not on this side. So, Mr. Speaker, I am very happy that the vulnerable people, some of them will get support, but there's still a lot of work to be done. There's still people in this country who need support. There are still people in this country who are striving, who are under pressure. And there are still people in this country, Mr. Speaker, who are trying to fool these people, <coughs> who, make, who are trying to make them believe that the government is not doing anything to help them, Mr. Speaker, or the government is doing nothing to take them out of the vulnerabilities. The government is, Mr. Speaker, within the resources that we have. And this is why we are borrowing, we are borrowing this, that money today, Mr. Speaker. And I want to wait. I want to wait for the discussion on borrowing. I'm going to hold my peace. Yeah. I'm going to hold my peace, Mr. Speaker. Waiting, waiting, Mr. Speaker, for the discussion on borrowing. I'm going to hold my peace, Mr. Speaker. Because, Mr. Speaker, sometimes I wonder, why must people just not speak the truth when things are easily verifiable. And I was speaking to a friend of mine last night, and he said to me, there are certain leaders like Boris Johnson, the president, the ex-president Trump, and the guy who, who just got beaten in Brazil. I didn't say that. <coughs> who deliberately speak lies because they believe that when they speak lies, people will not believe that what they say in these lies. Because people will not say, Minter is a big president in the line, so. So, Mr. Speaker, I reflected on that, and I, I, reflected, I reflected. And I must say to my friend that he's speaking the truth. Because I wonder, why must people lie when things are easily, easily, easily Clarified, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I would like members to support this motion because for the next year, at least, 8,000 vulnerable people in St. Lucia will get some form of much needed relief. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.